And welcome back to the shop. Another video on this Rudolph and Rose low B flat key making project. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit today about some of the tools that I've had to make for this project and how I'm going to go about doing this. Um, the original keys. For this model flute, well, this era flute, these were all cast in silver. See, this one is the simplest of the four keys. This is the only one that came with the flute. The other three are lost, hence my task at hand. But this is a fairly complex shape and all the other ones have all sorts of bends and curves in them to nest together properly. Um, the problem is there's only about 20 of these known to exist in the world with a low B flat and at least one of them is missing the low B flat lever. That one's in the Library of Congress. Um, there's at least two in the Library of Congress with a low B-flat. Um, I've shared pictures of the one that I've studied extensively and taken all sorts of measurements. Um, but typically these are cast and then filed to final shape. And the difficulty that I've run into in talking to lots of people, uh, there are at least two, probably three, different styles of levers, different shapes, different lengths, places where the curves are. Um, I think this is the oldest, the sorry, youngest one on record. This is probably the last one made that we know about. Um, and I, you don't have to go back in time too far before you find differences in the styling. And it could be that every one is different. Uh, I, I don't know. And without seeing all of them lined up next to each other, I can't determine that. All I know is that the measurements that I've gotten from various people would not fit on this flute. Now fortunately, uh, one of the owners of one of these flutes, from someone up in Canada, was able to make some silicone molds of his keys and send them to me and I was then able to make plaster castings and they they fit pretty well on this flute um, so that gives me an idea of the shape and the size pretty accurately um, much better than the measurements I was able to take even with the flute at the Library of Congress that I was able to measure in person, um, these are much more valuable than studying that flute in person. Um, now back to casting. I can't really use these. They're not thorough enough to be able to make molds for casting. So my plan was then, okay, there's silver. I will just forge the silver seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, from here down, sure, no problem. That's very doable on a straight shot. But we get a shape like this where we have a sharp angle and a sharp angle and then a curve. I, I practiced whacking on silver for a while and I just couldn't get things to behave. I couldn't get the angles as crisp as I wanted and this transition here was particularly problematic. 
So with all those various pieces in place, I thought this was going to be easier to get a good result, a more controlled result. Chop this up into pieces and then braise it all back together. And as long as I keep the silver content in the solder, you know, the higher than I think at 65% is good for uh, historical work. Well, I'm not repairing historical work, but I'm going to make it so the seam isn't visible anyway. So I'm probably going to use either medium or hard solder. I think hard solder is 80% silver, um, so that will blend in just fine, and you'll never be able to see the joint. Um, so I'm, that's what I'm going to do on these keys. I'm going to piece them all together and hopefully that will work out the way it needs to work out. But I have some other tools to make before then, but I wanted to show you some of the tools that I have going on now. When Rob replaced this, probably the best thing he could have done is he didn't re-drill the holes. He was missing the keys, so it made sense don't re-drill the holes, uh, because that would have been bad if, you can see that's only how far that pin goes in, uh, stops against that. If he would have walked the drill a bit, you know, this is only 50 thousandths of an inch in diameter. If he would have walked the drill bit a little bit crooked, that could have been catastrophic because both of these have to be on the same hinge and both of these have to be on the same hinge. So good thing he left it to me and I had to make a drilling jig. This fits right in right in the slot and then I align my pilot hole with the existing hole on the flute and I can run the drill in and know that it's going to be straight. And the actual purpose of this is so I can drill my pilot hole on my plastic mock-up and have the geometry right for where the hinge is. So I know that the keys are going to work when I mount them on here. So that's one tool that I made. Other tool that I made, which is turning out to be very handy, is this little just caveman style bending jig. This is a, just a block of brass that I have hand filed different curves in. And this is the the long curve that's on the top of all the all the keys that matches up really well. This is the curve for underneath the key. Um, got a half inch radius here, five sixteenths here, quarter inch here. Those are the radii on these various keys that I was able to tell from the plaster castings. Um, and this worked surprisingly well. I did a test run, um, rolled this piece of silver 105 thousandths thick and I just wanted to see what I could do with it and I was able to get not only a double bend S curve here but I was able to get that on there as well uh, all of this is just from I've got this aluminum plate here that just clamps down so slide the stock in like that, tighten down the screws, give it a whack, and it's it's working a lot better than I thought it would. I, I'm very pleased with how it's turning out.